can say what you want about Russell Means, uh, Native American leader, probably the greatest living leader uh, out there, the most prominent movie star, I mean, you name it. And he's helping lead the charge uh, for a you know, Na Native American uh, you know, a country within the United States. We're going to talk about that before he leaves us at the end of the hour. But the reason I wanted to get him on is I was watching an old YouTube video of him on like a year and a half ago when Obama first got elected, even before he got elected. And he said, look, the Republicans are bad, but the Democrats are the same. They're owned by the same people. It's a fraud. He got attacked by all these liberals uh, you know, who aren't as street smart as him. And I wanted to you know, get him on to talk about all of this. But also, the empire is now imploding. The dollar is plunging today. Gold is way up again. Uh, we're going to be going over that with him. But also, I'm, I'm a student of history. So I know that concentration camps were invented by the British uh, more than 200 years ago for India, but also for the colonies. And during the war, they put people like, uh, who was not a friend of Native Americans, uh, you know, Andrew Jackson's mother and brother who died, you know, a a as they were about to die, they threw them back out on the street. That's how they do it. They starve you to death, then throw you on the street to die. Uh, you know, uh, by the time you've uh, you know, basically looked like a concentration camp victim. And I read the writings of Adolf Hitler and the history. He modeled his camps off of the British concentration camps that were then perfected by the U.S. Army and the cavalry out west uh, against Russell Means people and others. But now the plantation model, the police state lockdown, naked body scanning model, the CPS seizing over a million children a year model uh, is exactly what was done with Native Americans. And if you study Native Americans, even tribes that submitted uh, to the tyranny and tried to make deals with the, with the New World Order types, it's been around for a while, they would take all their boys and girls, brainwash them, break their families up, and it's also come out in the last year in major Canadian news that they're digging up dead bodies of mainly Native American uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, in Canada boys where they just kill them in these orphanages. And that's mainstream news. So what's been going on to black people, black people, white people, everybody, uh, is now happening to everyone. And, and we lost Russell Means with his video Skype connection. We're going to get him back up. And if we're not successful, we'll uh, get him via telephone. But I wanted to get Russell Means' breakdown on all of this information. Uh, so Russell Means was born on uh, the Lakota uh, Sioux uh, Indian Reservation. He was the first national director of the American Indian Movement, AIM, in which role he became prominent during 73 standoff with the U.S. government at Wounded Knee. In 87, he joined the U.S. Libertarian Party and announced his candidacy for the presidential uh, nomination. He lost the nomination to Ron Paul. Since 92, Means has appeared in The Last of the Mohicans, Natural Born Killers, and other movies. He has championed the rights of indigenous peoples in other countries, as well as in the U.S. In a televised speech in 2000, Libertarian Party National Convention, Means said that he prefers the label Indian to more politically correct Native American. Everyone who was born in America is a Native American, uh, he said. And he joins us now to talk about the state of the world. But we're obviously talking about now Homeland Security saying gun owners, landowners, libertarians. Uh, Ho Homeland Security now has ADL, Southern Poverty Law Center, involved. I have the official document, and they're now going to school teachers, uh, school counselors, and trying to take people's children uh, if they're anti-New World Order. And so now what was done to the Native Americans, to the Native uh, Indians, is now being done to everybody. So I guess what comes around goes around. Sins of the fathers will come back on the grandsons and the great-grandsons. Mr. Means, good to have you with us. Thank you, Alex. Great to be with you again. What do you think of that information I just uh, laid out? It's right on point. And I've been saying since the 1980s that America, that was my speech just to the colleges. I, would, I entitled it, America is becoming one huge Indian reservation. I changed that title in the 90s to America has become one huge Indian reservation, and it's even more so today. All policies of the United States government, both foreign and domestic, were bred and born on an Indian reservation. That's land policy, that's health, that's education, and of course, economic and political. And you're not just saying that. I mean, there's an entire historical fact behind that. This is how they learned to get people dependent through the, uh, you know, the government agents that, that uh, you know, ran the programs to, quote, give the, you know, in Indians food and blankets. Uh, and it was all designed to starve you out and kill you. 
and now they admit this is their global plantation model. That's what the carbon tax they admit is, is to shut off all of our energy, the equivalent of shutting off the buffalo uh, to the Native Americans. Exactly. Even the death squads were first practiced on us back in 1973 on the Pine Ridge Sioux Indian Reservation, where I'm calling, where you're calling me from. And <clears throat> but my point is education. It's the living proof. When I grew up in California, Northern California, California was ranked number one in the nation, and the nation was ranked number one in the world in education. Then the federal government began to take, take over the funding and then the curriculum of uh, all the schools in the U.S. It is now, uh, California is no longer number one. It's number 43 in the nation. And we have slipped in the last, within the last 15 years, from 17th as a nation, 17th in education to 22nd. And so it's almost complete now that the federal government has been brainwashing uh, brainwashing our, our children for decades, and it's all taken from the reservation system. The stealing of kids, that is, is one of the most horrific examples of what the federal government has been doing, not only to us, but now to the American children. It is, uh, it's, it's blasphemous. The, the jailing of young America, ostensibly to fight the drugs, drug war, and yet the incarceration, we have more bodies, more people in prison than all of China, and China has a couple billion people, and yet it's supposed to be a communist horror place, and, and yet America has more people in prison than China. That's absurd. That's absolutely absurd. Well, that's like shipping in whiskey for the Indians, and then when they get rowdy, using it as an excuse to shoot them, uh, it, the government's on record shipping in almost all the narcotics, and then when they catch you with it, you go to one of their slave camps. Exactly. Exactly. And it is a slave camp. It's unbelievable. You know, uh, my son, I have a son that was in prison. They wouldn't parole him because he was uh, ramrodding the building of homes. They called him Janklo Homes because he was the governor at the time. But they were building homes uh, in, with prison labor, $1.50 a day. And they wouldn't let him out on parole because he was the supervisor. He was so accomplished that he was more valuable in prison than out. And then the general public, like idiots, say, good, make those criminals work. When you're working for 25 cents or even $1.50 an hour, no one can compete with that, not even the illegal aliens. And so the economy further implodes. Exactly. And Colorado has become such a prison state. You know, they make all nothing but office furniture there. So there's no business at all in Colorado or the surrounding states making business furniture, for instance. So... It, it, it cut out that industry. So we definitely have slave labor going on in this country, and it's unconscionable that the American people don't do anything about all of what the Indian policies has been visited upon on, on their backs and on their children. What's interesting is either way you slice it, it's an Indian policy, because from my study, before they kicked it off, in a scientific way against Native Americans in, in North America, this was first developed in India, which are really the Indians. Exactly. But the payoff now comes, and I, I can't believe the name callers. I, you know, I, I call the Republican Party nothing but name callers. And I, I call the, uh, the Democrats uh, brain dead because they don't know what they are, and they don't try to do anything except... Uh, rubber stamp whatever the bosses say, but they're, now and now they've announced they're going to print more money. Can you believe that? The Fed is going to print more money when they're the only ones buying the financial instruments that the United States produces, the bonds and the Treasury notes, because no one in the world wants anything of, that is of no value, and the dollar is of no value. It's unbelievable how America is keeping their head, you know, it's the classic ostrich approach. Yeah, they should get rid of the American eagle as the symbol and have it be the ostrich. Exactly. 
That's what it's become. Great point. I'm going to start using that. <laughs> the eagle has become the ostrich. The American eagle. It's 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 sick. You know, I uh, you know I'm wearing a T-shirt. That says, if voting could change anything, it would be illegal. And that's what really bothers me about the Tea Party movement. And when it first started, it was great. It's all about the Constitution and constitutional law, and let's get back to that. And then they start feeding in the crazies, you know, to make them look like it's a, a fringe outfit. And they accomplished it. Well, they've been and caught. They, they've been caught. Going back to this asinine, liberty inhibiting and preventing two-party system. It's impossible to have individual liberty with a two-party system. It's amazing. And they have been caught infiltrating the Tea Parties with people to say racist things and do things. And they've labeled the Tea Party as the only resistance to the New World Order, then they hand it over to the Republicans so they can pose as anti-establishment and get right back into power. But now the whole country is sinking into a global depression. They're announcing the one world government run by the banks that are the authors of this collapse. Uh, I mean, this empire is long in the tooth. What do you see happening, Russell Means? Well, I see the United States of America with only its military power trying to hang on to some kind of international uh, influence, but when Israel thumbs their nose at anything the United States wants or, desi or, or desires or asks for, they just thumb their nose. In Europe, Russia, you go on down the line, China has switched over to the euro, Brazil's real has now become uh, the, the currency to buy. It's backed by something solid. In the United States is just backed by paper, worthless paper. It's unconscionable. Uh, the entire machinations of the ruling class of America is so obvious. It's so obvious that anybody with a brain, I can't understand what's in the food that has made American people so stupid and the laughing stock of the world. Well, Russell, since you raised that, uh, I have children's Flintstones, pediatrician's number one choice. Uh, and it says uh, right here on the container that it has aspartame. And oh, then, my God. And then here is uh, an uh, allergy medicine, Alvert, uh, and it's got aspartame uh, in it. And then all, all the major sugar gums for children now... Hubba Bubba, uh, Big League Chew, uh, all of them now have aspartame, and I have all the government's own reports admitting it gives you cancer and makes you go blind. And Glenn Beck's going blind and admits he drinks Diet Coke, but I guess it's funny. He's just going to laugh about it and go blind. It's amazing how this, uh, the American people have allowed the government to treat the end result of drug induced illnesses by the by the pharmaceutical corporations and they allow that to continue you know they're building dialysis centers they're putting more drugs to take care of the drugs that have already got you addicted and sick and ill and that kill you so they produce more more drugs so that you can die faster and die in more pain it's 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 unbelievable how the American people have allowed themselves to be so duped. Well, you know, from the 1730s, there are, and anybody can Google this and pull up the university websites, there are the, uh, the British colonel ordering them to take infected smallpox blankets and then give it uh, to the Native Americans, to the Indians, and, you know, let's give the uh, tainted wood alcohol whiskey to them. Ha ha, you know, look at that engine go blind. Well, now the globalists just do it to everybody, Russell. Right. And if they don't do it to you, then they imprison you for slave labor. You know, if you, if you won't take their, uh, their drug-induced sicknesses, they'll put you in prison. It's, it's, or, or impoverish you. Like, we don't have a middle class anymore, you know?